What up? It's your boy Mo Hustle, and we are live on the hot seat. And I got a special guest today, Sebastian. What's going yep. on? <laughs> oh, hold on. It's not Sebastian. My bad. It's Sebastian. <laughs> you know what I mean? So y'all get it right. Sure. You know what I mean? What's good, man? It's good to have you in the building today. What's going on, Mo? Man, happy New Year. Happy New happy Year's, New Year, man. Brother. Blessings. Hope everything uh, goes right this year. Oh, I mean, yeah. I know I will. I know I will. Well, we got a lot of good plans, man. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. But uh, today, we want to touch touch some bases on some of the things you got going on, maybe a little bit of your past, you know. Uh, I guess we'd like to start with the beginning, you know. So, you know, when did you start doing music? Like, at what age? And, you know. So, like, as far as writing goes, like, I've always been... A writer first, mm -hmm. and I think that shows kind of through my music too, just the the quality of the lyrics and the messages and stuff like that, and the feeling of it. So I've always mm -hmm. been writing ever since I was like 10, 11. So like, was it like poetry or poems or something like this, or what was um, it? When I was younger, I, I used to write a lot of uh, short stories, mm -hmm. like just, just persuasive stories and stuff like that. And then as I got older, it kind of, it turned into, you know, uh, creative language, poetry, um, kind of just lyrics and stuff like that. I never actually put the rhythm to it. Right. I knew I always had the 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 rhythmic inclination and music, musical inclination, but it was more so, I just liked words a lot when I was younger. And then when I turned around like 14, mm -hmm. 14, uh, that's when I made my, I actually made my first song. You know, got a YouTube beat, right. got my phone, uh, and then when I was about yeah, when I I say when I was fourteen, that's when I was like, yeah, I'm I'm gonna do I'm gonna do the music stuff. And it started out as kind of like rapping, mm -hmm. um, and then mm -hmm. later on when I found my voice, um, I incorporated the singing aspect of it. But it's really just a, about music and and um, the words and the messages and the feelings and stuff. So it's any any genre, anything. It's just I make music that I like. Mm -hmm. I like Spanish music. I like rap. I like uh, hip hop, R and B. I like you know, all all kinds of all kinds of music. So I just make what I like and what I listen to. It's mm -hmm. dope. Have you have you ever thought about publishing a book or writing a book, anything like that? Um, since you like to write, you know what I mean? Yeah, I never thought about writing an actual book or anything right. like that. That's a, that's a, that's a thought I never right. came to. But I always did want to like have like a. Because one of the things that inspired me was I had, I used to have Tupac's um, poetry journal. With, it was a book, mm. The Rose That Grew From The Concrete. I used to have that journal. I used to read it all the time. Right. And read all of his uh, his little notes and stuff. And that's obviously something that they put together from one of his journals or whatever. But I have a lot of those notes. You know, I have a lot of things like that of my personal writings and uh, little poetry and little one-liners and stuff that I've, Written and I know that was real popular for a while. A lot of these little poetry books, like the Milk and Honey book, right. with just one liners and stuff, those were real popular for a while. So I thought about that in that sense of maybe doing something like with the po with the small poetries and one liners and things like that, just little inspirational quotes and stuff. So I don't know, maybe I will uh, give thought to it now that you. Right, that's crazy, that right? Seat. I mean, especially if you know how to write, man. I, I, any anybody knows how to write good, I would say, man, try to make some books. Cause you know mm -hmm. that 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 becomes a residual uh, income, just like music. Yeah, you know? for, sure, for sure. Publish it, let it go, see what happens. You know, of course, you got to do a little promotion or whatever. Yeah. But um, yeah. So, what is your motivation? Um, I think my motivation has always been just like. I think uh, when I was younger, I used to go with my my dad a lot to work and stuff mm -hmm. on the weekends and. Um, every summer and stuff, I really I didn't have too much of a free a free life. It was more some just just helping to do what I got to do for the family because that's what you had to do. Yeah. Um, you know, and that's it, it wasn't anything, but I think it it taught me the value of of what hard work is and doing yeah. something that you know you're gonna be doing something every day to make money because life costs money. Um, so I think it taught me like it's important to do something that you love. Right. And that and that's not really work to you because you can do it and never want to stop. And yeah. well, what else would they say? They say um, 
If you do what you love, you never work a day in your life. Yeah, so it's really a true, right. you know, a true... Because uh, you enjoy doing it. Exactly. And then you don't mind working the late hours because you're like, I, I love creating or whatever. Exactly. But so so, so, what kind of work were you doing with your, with your pops? Um, My dad did a lot of contracting and physical labor, mm-hmm. you know, and houses and plumbing. Yeah, see, and let me tell you a story about everything. that. See, like, I was telling my son, you know, like, he doesn't agree with a man should have a job on the laptop. He want to be hard. Yeah, you know, he's young. He don't know. And, um, you know, now he's jumping in these uh, tanks and stuff, cleaning them out and doing all this hard work. And uh, so now he appreciates, you know what I mean? Yeah. A little bit more. He's he's buzzing his ass. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm like, dude, it's not that I want to, you know, like I haven't went through it yet. I've, I've done construction. I've built houses from the ground up. I've done concrete jobs. I've done sheetrocking, painting, roofing, every damn thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and it was hard work. You know what I mean? And especially I was doing it at a young age, like 13 years old. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And I used to see the foreman, you know, uh, he would go do a job for a couple of days or whatever, and he'd be, he couldn't even move out the bed. He was hurting so bad. Yeah. And, and, and you know, and, and it made me think, hey, if he'd been doing that shit, this shit all his life. And that's the way he looks and that's how he's feeling. I don't want to be no... I don't want to be like that. Yeah. And it's a couple of things. So like physical labor is definitely rewarding. Like when you right. do something, you get home at the end of the day, you, you right. get to relax and you know, it's like, man, I had a hard day. I worked mm-hmm. hard. Physically, great. But I think a lot of people underestimate how hard every other, you know, even not physical labor, how hard that work actually is. Like the music game is very difficult, very... Mentally straining, mm-hmm. um, emotionally, things like that. Even, you know, graphic design. Any, 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 yeah, stuff, yeah. any kind of job. But I think it's, and that's another thing you said too, health is wealth. Right. And if you deteriorate your body so much when you, yeah. by the time you get older, it's harder to, for you to keep continue to grow that wealth. So right. you're going to have to use your mind eventually down the road. Why not oh, look, me, younger? Me, like... I didn't even graduate high school, bro. Like, I, I was a runaway. I was in the streets. I did a lot of crazy shit, you know, not knowing because I didn't know what was out there, and I always felt like there was something out there for me. So at a young age, I ran away from a group home. Like, man, I'm, I'm going to be out of here. But I didn't know what I was going to end up in. You know what I mean? Right. My brother stayed up in there, so he always, even to this day, he gets drunk, and he'll tell me, you left me there. And I'm like, you better be glad you was in there. <laughs> Because you didn't have to go with go through what I did. You know what I mean? And so I didn't graduate. You know what I mean? And I went have to do all this. Like, I had to fake my identity to be able to get a job, stuff like this. Because nobody was going to support me. I had to do my thing. And uh, so I got into the construction and all this kind of stuff. And it, it was hard labor, man. Like, you know, they would treat me like a slave, man. They'd be like, man, you're going to bust your ass here. Like, you got to prove yourself at a young age, you know? And... uh it's crazy that um, at some point of seeing that man struggle like that and he's been doing it all his life, I'm like, man, I cannot be like that at that age, so I got to figure out something. I got I to gotta work these computers. I got to learn this shit. And, like, I sat there and I learned, you know, like day after day on this shit, all night, all day, went about the computer, went about the shit to print CDs, all kind of stuff, you know what I mean? Like... I got to find a way, you know what I mean? To where later on, you know, I don't have, you know, I ain't going to be hurting, you know, back broke type shit from busting my ass. And, you know, I just thought of something. So, like, have your family been supportive since the beginning with their music? Because some people, some people's family don't support them, you know what I mean? Yeah. Luckily, I'm I'm blessed enough to have a family who is supportive Yeah. Um, and is encouraging. You know, but I think it's too, like, because they understand you want more for the next person. Like, you don't want them to be doing the same thing. The hard work, the struggling, they don't, you know. And and at least have, give me an opportunity, you know what I mean, to try it. And then they know that I have the ability to be able to sustain myself in other directions. But why not, you know, why not support? Man, my family isn't like that. They're completely different. (laughs) Like, all my life, they fucking, oh, my God. You need to find a real job. Da, 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 da. Bro, first of all, you got to be a risk taker. You know what I mean? You 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 got to believe in yourself so much that you got to get up and you got to go and you got to make this shit happen. You know what I mean? And, you know, 
I did it without people even supporting me. You know what I'm saying? I would go to the strangers and the strangers support me. I'd go in the middle of nowhere and just random people check me out. This is the music. You know what I mean? And and, and they would show mad love when you go. And it's funny because the, the family wouldn't support me. I travel around the whole goddamn country hundreds of times. Mm -hmm. And then they'll still be right there. You got to get a real job. More money in my pocket than they did. You know what I mean? They still haven't even left the neighborhood. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, it just shows you the difference of people's families. You got to support a family. Some people don't get that. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's and crazy. It's, you know, at the end of the day, like I said, it's a, it's, a, it's, it's a blessing that I have, you know, I have that kind of support. Yeah. So I'm grateful. That's dope. That's dope. That's cool. That's dope, man. Well, shit, man. Uh, okay, so, um, how many albums do you have out total? Albums. Well, uh, we're working on putting the one out. Okay, one this album is the first out. album. It's gonna be the first one, but uh, right. I got about two. I got two EPs out and and maybe about five, six singles. And and, and they don't know. I mean, I'm excited about this album. They done heard some songs, but uh, for those that haven't heard. What would you recommend them listening to first? <laughs> uh, a lot of people, you know, that have heard it, they like um, they like Gentleman's Club. Gentleman's Club. They like Gentleman's Club. And then obviously, you know, the the bigger singles on there like uh, Fovos. Okay, with Paul Wall. Yeah. My personal favorites uh, probably going to be Young Player or Savasque right, featuring right. Cap G. So those well, me, man, I'm a, I'm a big fan, you know, of all of it. Like, I, I'm just like, man, I'm like, Wow, this is, this is amazing, man, because, you know, you bring something to the table that a lot of these artists don't in Houston. You know, I've heard some stuff other places, but as far as, you know, Houston, we, we try to embrace our own here a little bit. Like, we like, hey, we from H-Town, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And plus the people out of town, they love that H-Town, too, you know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. So, you know, when I, when I heard your music, like, when I seen you on stage the first time, I was like, damn. You know, this is this this, this kid's good, and, and you know, cause to me, I felt like you had like this R and B, like, like, like to me, my favorite part in R and B was like the nineties. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And we don't get that no more. We get like some crazy shit. I don't want to say no big names or talk down on nobody because they still do their thing. But I miss that that nineties feel. You know what I mean? Cause that that was the feeling. Yeah, that's you know. That's definitely, like you said, that's a big, well, that's a big influence uh, for me as far as my R&B mm -hmm. goes. Like, I just love the pocket of the 90s. Yeah. You know, even, even maybe the early 80s. Right. Uh, I mean, the late 80s and, and, you know, a little bit of the 2000s. But that pocket of, like, the, I don't, I don't want to say emotional, but, it's, I don't, you know, not sexual. It's more of a feeling, man. Yeah, it gives you something to feel. Like, like. now, nah, the R&B is, like, more like talking about thoughts and shit like this. It's, like, different. It's yeah, not, it's not. It's not like making love. Like, back then, bro, we used to be on the phone, you know, the, the landline, <laughs> you know what I mean? Motherfuckers just talk on the phone all night and shit. Somebody in the other room will pick it up, your parents will pick it up and say, you still on the damn phone at 6 in the morning? You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Shit like that. And, you know, we was more romantic back then. Like, I think with the social media and stuff, it changed a lot. You know what I mean? What do you think about that? Um, like, as far as relationships and the, the way I think people look at each other. The music changed because of technology, social media, stuff like that. Like, before, you know, people talked and you had to seek out people. You had to seek out a person. Yeah. You had to seek out relationships. You had to make those efforts. Well, you know what? We were talking about that the other day. Like, everybody, a lot of people would say, man, I'm going to go to the mall. I'm going to go find me a chick at the mall and yeah. stuff like that, right? Yeah. Or I'm going to go to the skating ring or I'm going to go to the wherever. You know what I mean? And, it was a, it was more of an event. Yeah. You know, it was more of something to look forward to. Now it's like, you could just go on Instagram. You can go on Tinder. Like it's all it's lazy now. Well, well, yeah, but but they're all getting that same attention. Like now they got like hundreds of dudes in the DM. You know what I mean? So right. they gotta like choose and pick which one they gonna go with. Yeah, you know. But it's all so because of yeah. status. Like still, right. like now. Right. They, oh, so they want they gonna, status now. They gonna go with status, and that's the point of Instagram and all that yeah. stuff. Is, it's all about a status symbol, but that's what I'm saying. As far as like back then, you just meet a random perp, man. Girl, let me get your yeah, number. If the dude had the courage, the finesse to ask if, for it, yeah, if you fly, you, you know? fly. Like yeah. 
And that's the thing I think we lack, you know, and it shows in the music, like, because yeah. it's very straightforward. It's very, like, oh, you know, it's... So back then, they talk about... The music talks about your body, talks about your soul, talks yeah. about... Making love. Yeah. You know? the, I, I think, like, love right now is, like, played out or something. Like, they don't want to be in love. They're like, nah, I ain't gonna be in love. I actually. think it's making its way back, but yeah. it's, it's you know, it's in a different flavor, but... It's yeah. been it's been dead for a while. I think sh- not giving a can I say can I cuss? Yeah, yeah. Not giving a fuck was like the cool thing to do right, for right. a while. So, I mean, still kind of, but like not giving a fuck is like right, right. Ma- emo- being emotionless makes you makes you cool or makes you desirable, right, right, right. which is weird. I mean, I never understood that. Like, I yeah. feel like my I always even when I try to finesse girls and stuff, I always put that little extra sauce, the extra flair, <laughs> and they like that, you yeah, know, because yeah, yeah. it's different. Yeah. It's different now too, so I don't know. That's that's how it was for a while, but yeah, it's just about like definitely the the older stuff has emotion to it. It, it like you said, it gives you a feeling, and the new stuff is straightforward, but it's just like real life. Who who is your top three R and B artists of all times? I guess Ooh. top three R and B artists of all time of all time mm, of all times. Let's get it. This is gonna be. Pre, oh man, this is gonna be yeah, no, no, because it, it, there's so many of them. This is gonna be messed up, right? And I know I'm not supposed to say this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'm not I'm supposed to say this. <laughs> but he's horrible. He's a horrible person. But R. Kelly. Yeah. Okay. Well, no, no, bro. R. Kelly had them hits. This is what I'm saying. Like he's, you I'm know, saying. regardless uh, of the know, situation. The situation. He, like, he was the king for for a nice man. You could you you I'm could not make lie. R. Kelly, three four whole CDs with number jams playing. R. Kelly had. He had some, yeah, for sure. Um, I'm gonna have to, of all time, I'm gonna have to put, I say Chris Brown in there, okay, because, you know, he did take off after the '90s and and, and set a little platform for himself. I think even now, like he solidified himself in R and B, like, yeah. and he could stand with a lot of these people. Like, you could put Chris Brown in a lot of categories, and he can go toe to toe, um, not only on hits but just. I mean, he does the whole he does dancing everything. and everything. Yeah, he's yeah. just ridiculous. Right. Um, man, third one is gonna be hard. Mm, this is gonna be interesting. The third one is gonna be hard. Uh, let's see who who is out there just <laughs> killing the game. Man, there's a lot of people. I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna just throw some names out that I think are crazy. I, I can't really give you a third, but right. uh. Man, I don't even know. Um, I'm trying to think right now. Right, right, Beagles of all time. I don't know. I feel like the groups kind of... All right, let me ask you a question. Yeah. All right, all right, because we're going gonna, we're gonna, to help you out a little bit here. All right, so you got a female in the room with you. You want to set the move. What you going to play first? All right, so what, let me ask you a question. <laughs> What's the... What am I trying to do? I'm trying to... I'm trying to... No, yeah, you get I'm in the mood. To, you get in the groove. Right, you get in the get, groove. All right, I'm trying to get right. with it. Um, <laughs> The first thing I would play is probably if I'm trying to get right to it, yeah. I'm playing uh knocking the boots by H Town. Man, that's my shit, dog. Hold on. If I'm trying to get right to it, it All right. yeah, that's <laughs> at the beginning. Yeah. That's going I already know. Okay. Um I fuck with that. And then like just keep the vibe going, I'm playing. All I do is think of you. Mm. I'm playing, yeah. <laughs> Guys won't know. I'm playing, what else am I playing? I'm playing, uh, I'm going to play a little bit of Prince. I know I ain't going to hold it. No, boy going to hit the Prince oh, on him. <laughs> before he, uh, when he was doing the nasty stuff. <laughs> the nasty stuff, he's going to get explicit. I'm going to get a little bit of Prince in there. That's, that's, that's when going to get a little deeper into the yeah, yeah. bedroom. You're going to soak in the sheets for a little bit on that one. But even like, <laughs> A little bit of a little bit of SWB. I mean SWV. Mm-hmm. A little bit of uh, even guy like the slower song. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, a little bit of Bobby Brown, mm. like the Don't Be Cruel album. Like there's a lot of there's a lot of that old yeah. stuff that has a lot of that. No, oh, yeah, for that sure. Fire in there. So anything, honestly, my whole pocket is gonna be within that nineties. Right. That nineties R that nineties R and B or even that like I said the late eighties. With the Bobby Browns and uh, the Johnny Gills and stuff like that. So, all right. Sure. I see you. I see you. Now, 
when you hit that knock in the boots, I was like, damn, right? That, that, that'd probably be one one of the ones I'd pick right you there off top. Even uh, Like It Slow by H. Yeah. Like, they had a bunch of them. Yeah. But yeah it's that's crazy. crazy. So, damn, man. So, we got the album coming out. Let's talk a little bit about the album. All right. So. So, so, talk, so since we're on that vibe, I got one song on there called mm-hmm. Missing You. That's that. It, it like it is it, that mm-hmm. aura like that vibe completely. Yeah. Um. That's one of the ones that I made it early on. Uh. That one was on the EP, but that one is probably one of my favorite songs that I've ever made. Cause it's such a it's such a uh, I feel like it's such a uh, you know, an example of of what I love. You know, right. I feel like I tried to capture that. As far as that one goes, no nah, man, you be killing it, man. I'm, I'm, I've listened to some of this shit. I'm like, man, this, this yeah. incredible shit right here. Like, you really put some thought into this stuff, or maybe you was just feeling right on a certain time on some of this stuff. And that's the thing. But, like, I think too, I, I draw from other people. You know, as far as like yeah. when I sit and talk to people like this, or we have right. a conversation, like the homies talking about the girl and stuff like that. I draw from those. Uh, Get ideas from it. Yeah, I draw from those ideas or those those situations to. To move, you know, to move to to inspire me for that, but also too to be more relatable to my audience, mm-hmm. you know, because if I'm drawing from directly from somebody else, somebody else got to be going through it. Somebody in the audience got to be going through it, and I think that is a good. I think I, I'm, you know, not to pat myself on the back, but I'm good at that as far as my music goes. You know, kind of relating to the people or creating a right. an emotion or a vibe. Um, yeah. Yeah. And like I said, a yeah, lot. You definitely do that. You definitely do that, man. That that one. Uh, what was the one? Um, let me say something about keep the clothes up in the closet or some uh, shit. <laughs> Cause I bought it. All that yeah. shit. That one's called. That one's called for what? That's for what? my. Uh, that's like my uh, my. Man, talk to me, man. Cause, hip-hop. cause, man, that's some crazy shit right there. Like, I'm like. What the hell? Like, I had seen all the other ones. I didn't even see this one. And I'm like, dude, <laughs> this is good. You know what I mean? It just it just creates, like, you can relate to it. Or, like, at some point, you felt like that. It says, girl, leave all little clothes up in the closet. No, you can't take a thing because I bought it. The way you did me wrong, it left you heartless. Yeah. I gave you everything. No, something like that. But there's a couple of, like, little Man, no, there. no. It, it's, bro, that shit right yeah. there. You had the girl, you was calling her, and then out of nowhere, like, she was laid up with the other dude and shit. And then I'm like, man. And I'm like, where the hell is this going to go? And then you <laughs> sitting outside of the house, and the dude comes out, and he's zipping up his pants and shit. And I'm like, damn. And she tried to explain something. And you're like, nah. Yeah, nah, nah. I ain't trying to hear that shit. You know what I mean? We just definitely like that. We want to capture every, you know, yeah. and be creative, too. So, like, right. we, I like to have creative videos and stuff. Man, no, and then, so how did the Power Wall come up? Come up the um, the Faux Vogue's feature. Faux Vogue's, yeah, yeah. So how, so how did that happen? Because didn't you have, like, a a first track like that? Or how did that happen? Yeah, so what happened was we dropped the original, which is the one, um, the version without Paul Wall on it. Right. And I posted in the video that we did for it, um, there's a section where he comes out as mm-hmm. one of his murals. Right. Uh, in downtown, around downtown. Okay. And um, when I posted it on Instagram, I guess he had seen it, tagged him in it, oh. and he had seen it, and he commented on my on my on my post. You know, he put a bunch of fire emojis, and I was like, let's you know, let's capitalize on this. So I told everybody on my Instagram, I said, hey, go tag Paul Wall, tell him y'all want to see a remix. Right. And I think I got like, you know, like. A hundred people mentioned him. Right. And then uh, we ended up getting in touch with him. And he said he was down to do a remix, so we set it up. Dope. Michael Ortiz did the video. Yeah, shout out, shout out, Power Man. That's, that's one of the most humble uh, dudes that I know in the H-Town rap scene. Uh, you know, he's always down to take pictures. Always there for his fans. He be, man, he pops up on my shit like all day. He be commenting on people's shit. I don't ever see nobody comment on people's stuff like he does. Yeah, he's definitely you know? active. Active um, for sure. For sure. He always shows love. So yeah, so then you 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 come together with him, you guys do the remix, and then you do a video. Yes, sir. How did that feel? 
honestly, that was like, so that was the first uh, touch of like, you know, the dream that I, that I, oh. that I experienced. Um, and the, the original did well. So, you know, you can only assume that the, that the remix with, with a, with a, you know, a national, you know, a national celebrity right, right. is going to do decent as well. So, but I think, you know, cause you grow up with, with certain people right, and obviously right. being from Houston, like Paul Wall, somebody that you've always seen. Yeah, Paul Wall's big. Yeah. You, yeah. you know, you've always seen him. You always heard about him and then it's about the culture and stuff like that. So I think, um. When he came, like when I saw him, it wasn't until, you know, I was cool. I was cool. Everything was all yeah. right. I wasn't being no crazy fan or nothing like that. Um, everything was cool. And then once we started filming and I seen him, you know, we were doing the, the verses and stuff like that. But he was rapping my verse. Yeah. Like he knew the words to my it was part. Dope, so he fucked and I was him. like, man, that like it, it was, it kind of got me excited. It got me right. happy. It's like that, uh, and let you know that people appreciate your yeah, music. The validation, especially the you right. know, because he could have just known his part and not cared about the rest of the song. Bro, I personally know like a bunch of your songs already by memory. I'm like, damn, <laughs> how do I know this shit? But you know what? You make it easy for the listener too, though. Yeah. Cause you got that rhythm, and then you know, you you man, like, yeah, it, it's catchy and it, and it's, it's it's easy to learn. I that's I think that's when I'm writing. That's my 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 main goal is to make sure that. There's the catchy parts that mm-hmm. that's gonna get stuck in your head and everybody's gonna sing. You know, I feel like some sometimes people they complicate it. They'll sit there and they'll work and and re and revisit and revisit and revisit mm-hmm. and revisit. But sometimes it's like the first thing that comes out is always gonna be the catchiest because that's mm-hmm. the first thing that came to your mind. So it's the easiest thing to release. I mean, you got those melodies too, man. You, you got them on point. <laughs> but yeah, man. So okay, so um, let's talk a little bit about the young player. Um, a joint because that right there I was like wow like when I first seen you on stage that I, I didn't even see all that I didn't even know what you had in the vault or nothing but I envisioned this kind of stuff before I knew you even had it yeah and then when you sent it to me I'm like dude this is everything I envisioned it's some crazy shit and so so how did that go about the whole young player thing so whenever COVID happened um it was March of 2020 I think mm-hmm. March of 2020, it hit. And I was, I had already decided that I was going to dedicate, you know, about six months just to the music. Right. And, uh, and you know, I was cooking every day in the studio, cranking out joints. And that was my first, like, Spanglish record. Mm. And um, when I made it, like, I knew it was crazy. Like, I mm. had to beat. And then I made the hook, the young player, and you know I love that drama. I started naming all the girls in the country right. and stuff. I was like, nah, this one. No, yeah, you was like, hitting this one and that yeah, one. Man. Yeah. Oh my God, he got them all over the world and shit. I'm like, damn. I knew that one was a vibe. Like, I knew. Yeah, it's a definitely a vibe. For I knew sure. it was a vibe. So, um, you know, when my, when, my, when my manager got a hold of it, my pop, shout out, mm-hmm. shout out my manager, my pop. Uh, when he got a hold of it, he was like, nah, this is. This is going, you know, this is something. So we got to do this one correctly. We got to right. do this video correctly. So we have a, um, I have a, I have a, uh, my Mexico PR, mm-hmm. Benjamin, shout out, shout out Benji, mm-hmm. Benjamin Salinas. Um, we contacted him. We said, hey, we're going to shoot the, we're going to shoot the young player video over there. Um, so let's, let's get it going. And he set everything up. He got, the, he got us the boat. He got us the models. Uh, he got us the club looks, you know, the beach clubs. He got us in. Man, them women look like they was having a great time. Oh, yeah, they were having a great time. <laughs> you, were you having a great time? I was having a great time. Oh, shit. I was having, there's no doubt about that. I seen but, females feeding the strawberries. They was all smiling. <laughs> they were loving that shit. Yeah, and shout out to all those girls, man. Oh. They were all, all those women, great, beautiful. Man, women. beautiful. All of the women, all of y'all were beautiful. Super cool. Um, wow. Super polite. Everybody was, you know, very professional. Shout out to all of them, man. And, and fun fact, they're all from over there. So they're all either Argentinian, Cuban, Venezuelan, uh, Mexican, whatever the case is. So yeah. it was definitely... It was the, put together well. And it sure. was, you know, it was the actual culture of the song, you yeah. know, because all the women were from different places. So mm. um, definitely it, it was such a vibe. But yeah, you know, sh- like I said, shout out Benji. Um, Benjamin Salinas, he, he set everything up over there. Mm-hmm. And uh, we, you know, and, and obviously... We all coordinated um, with the video man. It came out. It came out super dope. 
uh, super yeah. dope. So, yeah. So, uh, so I heard that that they want to come to 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 the United States though. Who? Them females. Uh, some of them, some of them do, but they some of them can't. You know. Yeah, some of them can't. Yeah, man. America makes it so hard to come over. Yeah, you here. gotta come for work. Yeah, but but I don't mind going over there. Yeah, I feel you. I feel you. I don't mind going over there for no. You're like for, I'm coming. Yeah, I it just. <laughs> A lot, a lot of them too. Like you know, I keep in touch with with a couple of them. They're just cool, you know, cool people. Cool people, yeah. Good people, and um, like I said, it's all professional, it's all love. So. That's dope. That's dope. All right. Well, that's it. Y'all go look it up on YouTube. Young player. Young player. Definitely the jam. It's a feel yeah. good jam. Got another one coming. Um, that we filmed out there in Cancun. Another a reggaeton song, all all in Spanish. This will be the first one, all in Spanish, called Aldana. Mm. Um. That we filmed out there. So what's that about? Aldana, is that like a name or something? Yeah, so that's a funny story. So one of the girls um, from the Young Player video, her name was Aldana. Mm. And out of all of the girls, she was the one that, you know, I I, I kind of had a crush on the most. Mm. Like, I was crushing all of them, but she's the one that was like stood out to me and I right. had a crush on the most. Cool. And she, she had asked me, you know, because there's a part in the Young Player song where I start naming a, a, a bunch of women's names. Um, and she said, why didn't you put my name in there? Mm. And her name was her name was Aldana. And, you know, because I was already crushing on her, I was like, I'll go home right now. <laughs> I'm writing one yeah, about you. I'll go home right now and give you a whole song. So mm. it was just kind of like a funny little back and forth. Um, but it inspired me. So as soon as I got home, you know, I was like, let me let me take the vibe of where I just came from and the inspiration. Right. And make something for it. So I came, I came out with the uh, with the song called Aldana, and that's her name. So right, um, definitely a cool little. You know, just it goes to show that music is is very real, and it, uh, it comes from a real place. So right, uh, definitely a, a inspiration, and that it's it's gonna be a good song. The video is gonna be even better for sure. So can't wait to see it, man. Um, let's see what else. You got a song with Cap G, Sabasque. Yeah. So y'all make sure to go check out Sabasque. It looks crazy though, man. It looked like some movie type shit. So who thought of this kind of stuff? Yeah, man. So when when um the song itself is kind of very cinematic. It has like uh it's very uh like picturesque, you know, it gives you visions and stuff like yeah. that. So when we showed it to when we showed it to the uh, videographer, the director, he already was coming out with all kinds of ideas. Oh, shit. And, and he mentioned, like, let's do, you know, something narco vibe. And it's like a love story based off, of, you know. I well, where did y'all shoot that at? We shot that in uh, California, Calabasas, California. Calabasas. Okay. Yeah. So, oh. yeah, we, we kind of collaborated. But he he did come up with that narcos idea. And we and we came up with the storyline and stuff yeah. like no, that. No, it was dope. And I, and I liked the... The, the lady with the dress, yeah. the, the little youngster he was going in. The folklorico dancer. So, yeah, so what is that? Okay, so he's a... So a, that fol, fol, folklorico, that's the native, like, um, the traditional Mexican, you know, dance dances right. and, and uh, culture and stuff like that. And I, I think that was important, too, like, to implement in the music because at the end of the day, I am, that's I'm Mexican, and that's right. what I like to brand myself as, um, Latino. And it's important to me to keep my culture in, in a lot of my stuff, especially when it has it's a, it's a Spanish song right. um, or whatever the case may be. So that was just definitely a dope vibe. And shout out to the dancers, you know, shout out to the choreographer for that, uh, Gabriela. Everything was dope. Came yeah, together. yeah, it was very well put together. That's yeah, all I can say. Yeah. Everybody and, uh, on that team was good. Well, like, I didn't know what to expect at the beginning. I was like, whoa, this is like a movie, you know. And then I, I waited a little bit and then finally came in. I was like, oh. Man, it's crazy. And then, like, y'all are like, I don't know, y'all robbing this dude <laughs> on there. It was, it was some crazy shit going on. Yeah. But it looked like some straight movie, you know what I mean, type type scene. Definitely a movie. We wanted to keep it super cinematic. And, like I said, it just just quality, you know what I'm saying? Do right. stuff that people aren't really doing, especially on a smaller scale, like, you know, yeah. you know, trying to show that we can play with the big boys. No, yeah, yeah, y'all definitely doing that. Uh, speaking of movies, man. I heard you was out in L.A. and California out there jumping on movies and, and you know, how, how did that go come about? Yeah, man. So I, I actually linked up with um, uh, producers, a couple producers and a couple, um, you know, musicians out there. And in Cali, everything is connected. Everybody knows everybody. Right. So linked up with my man Curly, Curly the Fifth. Y'all go check him out. Shout out Curly. 
um, he's shooting a he's shooting a TV series, and uh, some of his you know he's shooting a TV series. So we went ahead and you know jumped on that. I got a role in that one, right. a nice you know a nice little small significant role, and I got a couple songs on the soundtrack as oh. well. Um, and you know through him I I, I met a, a a few other people and and did a a couple cameos in another uh, feature film that's coming out called Bora. Mm. Uh, I'm not sure the release date on that, but I did a, a couple cameos in that in that film called Bora. And they're also, so I got in that movie because they're using a few of my songs on that soundtrack okay. as well. Um, because it's like a Spanish, it's a Spanish African American uh, film. So. Man, but but you got that look, man. You like that young Antonio Banderas and yeah, shit. Yeah, you know I get that a lot. That Antonio <laughs> Banderas. You know, it's funny. Even from the younger, the younger, uh, the younger people. This girl, this girl told me she was a, a little bit younger. She said, "You know who you remind me of?" Mm-hmm. And I said, "And I said who?" And she said, "The you remind me of the dad from Spy Kids." Yeah. Like, she didn't know his name. Yeah, An- yeah. Antonio Banderas, but she knew that. Yeah. There was that guy, so like you know, even the younger generation, yeah. they say yeah, that they still see it. Yeah, and they don't even know who he is. It's they crazy. Just, it's just funny. It's Maybe just you, funny. you need to get with Antonio Banderas, and he could have a son, and do a movie. That'd be crazy as hell. Yeah, I was thinking Ain't like that'd be crazy. I'm gonna try to play off of the Zorro theme on. Man, hold on. On some videos <laughs> or something. Hey, shout out to all of my uh, filmmakers out there. You know, y'all, y'all get at the man. Yeah. You know what I mean? Definitely but, uh, big ideas. We yeah, good content to work with. It's crazy, man. So, from the music industry to filming, what else you got up your sleeve? Man, uh, I'm trying to get I'm trying to get like you and do some, put some shows up and do yeah. some podcasting. Yeah. Um, right now we're you know we're all we're all in house, so I mm-hmm. do all the production. I yeah, the yeah. Work. Let's talk about that. So you produce your whole album? Yeah, every song on there is. 100% touched by me. Like, not just recorded, but he, you, you made all the tracks. The music as well. Yeah, the Paul Wall song, the Cap G song. Every every track on there is is uh my, my production. Yeah, so, so basically, don't just hit them up for um for for rapping or, or singing, but you can hit them up for them beats. Yeah, right? whatever you need. You need lyrics, you need beats, you need to be recorded. Um Whatever you need. Jack of man. all trades. Yeah, that's how we do it. That's dope, man. That's dope. That's dope, man. And uh, didn't you just work? You, you just work with Bubba Sparks too. Yes, sir. We did a song. Uh, we did a song, Bubba Sparks. That uh, we're still we're still working on the mixing and mastering, but that yeah. one's gonna come out soon. Nice. That's a nice little a nice little club hit. And then uh, I know you have another one with uh, what's his name from the Cumbia Kings. Um. DJ Kane. DJ Kane. Yeah, Sue Flame hollered at me like, man, I didn't get that young stoner track with DJ Kane. Yeah, that one I'm actually excited about. That one's a good little, I feel like I really, I really, uh, I'm really happy with the verse that I put on that one. That's dope, man. Well, shit, man, it was a pleasure having you, man. You know, it's only the first time, of course, we're going to get you back up in this joint, man. You know what I mean? Later on, it's just the beginning of the year. So later on, you know, we, it's only right we bring you back. Yes, but, um, uh, Give them your social media one time. Y'all go check me out on Instagram at the real underscore Sev. Uh, check me out on Facebook at Sebastian. On YouTube, I'm Sebastian. Sebastian Music. Everywhere else, I'm the real underscore Sev. TikTok, the real underscore Sev. So wow. y'all go follow me. Keep keep uh, keep looking at me, man. We got some big things coming. Some some very important moves for sure. And uh, last but not least, give out some shout outs, man. We want a shout out out there. Man, let me shout out my manager, my pop. I'm going to shout out Benjamin, PR in Mexico, Benjamin Salinas. Um, I'm going to shout out Mo Hustle, man. Mo Hustle. Oh, really? Definitely, he played a big role. Uh, shout out my sister, man. Uh, we always we always work together on some music. Shout out just shout out my family in general. Yeah. Um, shout out my cousins and everybody that really supported me. A lot of people, you know, they put in time and effort into this movement, and it, it definitely it shows. So uh, I want to just, just, you know, everybody that everybody that really shout out Curly man, shout out Curly the Fifth, shout out uh, Ian man, uh, Hundred Frames, Burner Boy too, your Burner boy. boy. Shout out, shout out uh, DJ Dazzy Ross man, shout out Dazzy Ross. Oh, Got really? some big things coming. So definitely, there's a lot of people that 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 are on the uh, that are on the tip man. Shout out FA, shout out FA the plug. So. 
Already, man, it's your boy Mo Hustle. Y'all make sure to check me out on Instagram at the real Mo Hustle. You can also check me out on Facebook at Mo Hustle. That's M O Hustle. And I'm the only one on there, you know. And uh, you can check out my personal page, Manuel Rodriguez. Other than that, hit me. You know what I mean? Hit me in the inbox. You need me for anything? But this is the hot seat, man, and we clocking out, man. Much love. All right, man. Thank you. Thank you for everything. I appreciate you coming through.